everybody. Welcome back to the Shaquille YouTube channel. My name is Vanda and I am really excited for today. It's This is a good one. I am here to show you pretty much everything you need if you are going to be wearing synthetic wigs. Well, I shouldn't say you need them, but there's about 12 items I'm going to show you if you would like to be a serious synthetic wig wearer that you would probably benefit from having. And they are things that I use, um, if not daily, then definitely weekly. But before I start dishing out all the secrets, I'm going to remind you to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can learn even more about alternative hair. Also, if you want to get to know me a little bit more and catch some more fun wig action, then make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaquelle Hair, where I give even more tips, more tricks, and a lot of different wig reviews. Okay, let me just get started right away and I'm going to start start with the first thing that you're going to need as a synthetic wig wearer which is going to be some synthetic shampoo and synthetic conditioner so you're not going to want to use human hair products usually on your synthetic pieces that's going to cause a lot of buildup on your on your synthetic pieces it's hard to get it out sometimes it causes a little bit of damage over time um sometimes it makes them all gunky and I just wouldn't recommend it wholeheartedly. I would absolutely suggest getting some synthetic shampoo and synthetic conditioner. So the ones that I use most often is John Renault's Fiber Love Shampoo and John Renault's Fiber Love Conditioner. This is a shampoo um, that you would use with water and this is a conditioning spray that you would use after you shampoo. I am going to make a separate video though on how to wash your wigs. I'm not going to go do that now otherwise this video is going to be like 500 hours long. <laughs> You can find these products on our website at chaquelle.com, chaquelle.ca or chaquelle.com.au. So we do sell these there if you are looking for some shampoo and conditioner. Okay, the second, or I guess this would be the third product since shampoo and conditioner has one and two. The third product I would recommend for you is some um, detangling spray. So if you know anything about synthetic wigs, they get tangly really quickly especially if they're longer so the longer they are the more tangly they get if you have a shorter um synthetic piece like a pixie cut or you know even chin length and up i wouldn't even necessarily recommend getting a detangling spray because it's just not really going to tangle too badly but anything beyond your chin i would say i would probably recommend a detangling spray so this is john renault's hd smooth detangler we also sell this at Chaquelle.com if you are looking for it. Um, I would suggest this is something that you could use daily. In the morning before you go out the door, you can take your wig and spray it generously, mostly around the ends. And I would also focus on the nape. So that would be sort of the section right under this, the back of your wig here, because that is where it's going to have the most friction against your skin, against your clothing, and it's gonna rub the most there and get the most tangled. Once you've done that, you're just gonna go ahead and comb it through with the fourth product I recommend, which is a wide tooth comb. So using your wide tooth comb, you're just gonna comb it through. If you get to a bad tangle, try not to force your way through it. Start at the bottom and work your way back up again so you're not pulling too much on the hair. So working through after you've sprayed it with detangling spray, um, doesn't take too long to dry because synthetics don't really retain moisture like human hair does. So after that, you are pretty much ready to go. Okay, now let's talk about a wide tooth comb. Now, <coughs> sorry guys, excuse me, I'm still getting over this cold I have. Um, with a wide tooth comb, this is going to be much better for your synthetic fibers because as I was mentioning just before, it's not going to pull as much on your fibers. If you have a like a big bristle brush that you would use on human hair, that's a lot of bristles pulling on a lot of fibers at the same time. And the more you pull on the fibers, the more it's gonna stretch them out. Once they're stretched, um, I like to think of it like, um, you know when you're wrapping a present with ribbon and you take scissors and you take the scissors along the ribbon and you pull, 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 and when you release it, the ribbon coils up. That's what I like to think about um, with 
synthetic fibers and pulling on them. The more you pull on them with your brush, it's gonna stretch them, stretch them, stretch them, and then they're gonna coil up and that's what causes the frizziness at the end. So not only does all the friction on your clothing, the friction just throughout the day, your daily use of your wig, but also the more brushing you do, the more combing you do, and the more brushing you do with a bristle brush, uh -uh, don't do it, <laughs> it's gonna cause a lot of frizz. So this is gonna be the gentlest way to detangle and comb out your wigs, other than, of course, just using your fingers. All right, the fourth product I would recommend for you guys is to get some dry shampoo. I just have the um, Argan Oil Morocco dry shampoo. I just get this from the drugstore. Almost any dry shampoo is going to work for the most part. Um, the reason you would get dry shampoo is mostly for your standard synthetics. I don't use dry shampoo on my heat defiant synthetics, but I do on my standard synthetics because synthetics can be a little bit shiny. So if you get a wig that just looks a little bit too shiny, dry shampoo is a really great thing to use to help dull the shine. All you're gonna do is spray it. Generously all over the wig and take your wide tooth comb brush her out and look it's not going to solve all of your shiny problems but it is going to lessen your shiny problems and it's gonna just dull it down a little bit more I'll put this one on for you oh I was just wearing um scene stealer by Raquel Welch in the color shaded biscuit I have straightened her I have cut layers in her she's like seven years old you guys she's a long lasting wig and I pretty much only wear her in a bun or a ponytail now. Um, and this one I'm going to be putting on is L, E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, not just the letter L, E-L-L-E -L -L -E by John Renault in the color Mist, which is a nice gray color. So lovely. Okay, so I've put dry shampoo on her. The shine has dulled down a little bit. She's still a little shiny. Not gonna lie, it's not gonna solve your problems, but it's just gonna help a little bit. I wish I didn't put this on now because the next thing I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna have to take this off for. <laughs> Silly me, I didn't plan ahead. <laughs> okay, the next thing, I don't know what number I'm on. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm on number six maybe. <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna show you guys that um, not everyone uses these. I actually personally do not use these. Um, but I know many women who do, which is why I'm showing this, but it's a wig grip. So a wig grip is made out of like a velvet material. If you know materials, <laughs> if you're a connoisseur of the materials, <laughs> you'll know that velvet is really smooth when you pet it one way, but rough when you go the other. It's like going against the, the grain of the, the velvet. So the whole idea behind wig grips are that once you put it on your head, you're going to put it on so that the rough part's going backwards. If you pet your head backwards, it's rough. and you pet your head forwards, it's smooth. So that when you put your wig on top, that friction against the velvet is going to stop it from wanting to slide back. So make sure you put it on that way or it's not going to quite work the same. Now, the reason I don't wear wig grips is because I am very lucky. I have a built-in wig grip. And what I mean by that is that the stubble on my head, um, when I shave my head, I of course have the stubble that grows back in this like circle on top of my head and it acts as my own wig grip. Like it's, it's definitely adding some resistance and friction when I put my wig on top and it catches. And sometimes my wigs like stay stuck on my head and I have to like lift it over top of my stubble. It's kind of funny. So I don't use wig grips but let me show you how they work. So making sure that they are rough going back and smooth going forward. You're going to line up your lace. A lot of them come with lace. This particular one is on our website. It's called the Stay Put Wig Grip. It has this bra strap adjuster. So you can loosen or tighten it. Um, this is as tight as she goes. I am a petite head size, um, 20.5 inches in circumference. And quite honestly, I could make this go tighter on, or I would want to make this go a little bit tighter on me. So if you are a petite, um, you might find this one to be a little bit 
too big. It, I feel like it like just fits me. Um, okay, once you put it on, you're gonna line up your lace part to where your lace part is if you have a lace part <laughs> or a monofilament top. And you're just gonna put your wig over top of this. Flip. And the wig grip just disappears underneath. So the lace lines up, you don't see it underneath your monofilament and it can be scooched back just a little bit behind your wig so that you don't see it at all when you are pulling your hair back. So having that there means that if you do little tugs, it's not gonna move as easily as if it didn't have that underneath. Okay, next up, I don't even know what number we're on anymore. I'm gonna say seven, but I don't know if that's right. <laughs> okay, the next thing or things, I guess, that I would recommend is getting some um, styling things. English, styling sprays or creams or wax, anything that you can use to help you style. Again, I don't recommend using human hair styling products, so I wouldn't recommend using human hair hairspray or human hair things. <laughs> These are specifically formulated for synthetics, or you can also use them on human hair as well, but they are specifically formulated for synthetics. So personally, I like these two the best. This one is called the Aesthetica Sea Salt Spray. And what it does is it helps give you um, sort of a more textured look. Uh, it's really good for beachy waves to help bring out the style a little bit more. And this one is the Peace Out Contour Cream by John Renault. This is really great for um, getting the style again to be brought out more, create more texture, and I find it adds a bit of, <coughs> sorry, about a bit of funkiness to your style as well. Now something like this could also be used to help with um, like flyaways or little baby hairs. If they're sticking up, you can also use this. Let me show you what it looks like. It's just a cream. You can use it to help sort of um, tame those and keep them down a bit more. Now, this is gonna leave a little bit of a residue on your wig, whereas I find the sea salt spray doesn't, you don't feel it very much, whereas this is gonna feel a little bit tacky. Let me actually show you quickly what these two products do. I don't often use um, products like those on my straighter wigs. I prefer them on my shorter wigs and my like wavy wigs. So this now is January by John Renault and I would use these products to help bring out these waves. So my waves have fallen quite a bit over the years. This wig is, I don't know, like three years old maybe. I would just take my sea salt spray, spray it generously all over, lots of scrunches, and look, it's starting to bring out that wave and give more volume, more texture, and getting that beachy wave look to come out. Look at that. And it's also really good for extra hold. So this will hold for a little bit in the day as well. Okay, now the contour cream, I'm gonna get a little bit on my fingers, not like an insane amount. You don't wanna over gunk it up. Um, rub it in my fingers. Put it through the fibers and then start with your scrunching. And this is gonna give a lot of funkiness and body and this, I find, brings out the style even more. Like, holy moly, look at that. So this is kind of what each of them do. They each have their own place. Um, you're gonna find, again, that the sea salt spray isn't gonna feel as tacky, whereas the contour cream, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel it a little bit. So if you don't like that gunky feeling, um, like you've put something in your hair, then the sea salt spray would probably be better for you. Okay, the next thing I would recommend, again, I don't know what number we're on. I'm throwing the numbers out of the window here. No more numbers, I'm just telling you now. <laughs> okay, the next thing you're gonna need, or what I would recommend, you don't need it, but it's good to have, is a spray bottle. This one in particular is nice because it's pressurized, so it has a nice mist to it, as opposed to like a 
<laughs> we have to keep squirting. This one is a nice mister. This is actually just like a plant mister that you can just find on Amazon um, and it works really well. Now, the reason I would suggest getting a spray bottle such as this one for water is it's really good with, first of all, helping to style your wigs, just to also help bring out some style a little bit more help refresh your wigs, especially maybe if you had some product in it from the day before and you don't want to keep adding product, you can add some water and it'll sort of help revitalize that product a little bit. See, look, at it's giving more life to the sea salt spray. I'm only going to add it on this side too. Um, so water is great for styling. It's also really good. Let's say you have a new wig or you have, or you have an old wig and you want to change the part. Um, synthetic fibers don't always go Oh my God, so don't always go the way we want them to go and we have to do a little bit more training but water of course this is going to be gunky now okay water sort of helps set the part a little bit i would just spray it sort of in the part line and that's going to help direct the fibers in the direction you want them to go and that would dry there and it'll just help you change your part a little bit more easily so it's not continuously flopping your face over and over so water is good for a couple things. I'm going to get my part back to where it was because there we go, sort of. Anyways, all right, there we go. <laughs> I look silly. This part's still not quite right, but <laughs> oh well, <laughs> upward and onward. All right, the next things that you are going to need, this is like my favorite thing ever, is accessories. So when I say accessories, I mean like claws, I mean like baby claws, <laughs> um, cool little clips, headbands, and my all-time favorite, scrunchies. Um, I love a good bow scrunchie. The best part about wearing wigs is the fact that you can change them up, switch them, make them your own, style them as if they were human hair, and it just makes everything so much more fun so that you're not in that same exact look every single day. I know that when I first started wearing wigs, I would wear my wig and I would just wear it the way it was. I'd be afraid to touch it. I don't want to wreck it. I don't want to screw it up. Um, and I didn't really know how to work with my wig in order to style it and make it look natural. So I'm telling you, you got to play around with it. Try things out. Um, because look at how cute this is. It's the cutest ever, right? So don't be afraid to style your wigs. Go out to the drugstore. Just get a cute little clip and practice put it, putting your wig up in a little clip. I don't know. Anything to just spice it up a little bit. Okay, where are we at here? Um, moving on. We're going to go with these ones next. So I have here got to be glued, ultra glued, um, styling gel and got to be glued blasting freezer spray, freeze spray, not freezer spray. The reason these things, um, I think you should have is because let's say your wig is slipping back a little bit and you need a little bit of extra security, or let's say your lace front is lifting a bit and you want it to stay put. These are kind of like a wig glue. Yes, they are a gel and a hairspray, but they are extremely strong hold and they are safe and easy to use for your wigs. So um, what you would do, my spray nozzle on this is, oh, it's working again. It was all weird. You would pull your wig back. This would be if you have a lace front, by the way. You would spray where your lace is going to sit, put it on top. And then you're going to press it down or what I like to do is get a like a headband and wrap it around so that it holds it itself and I'm not sitting here like this all the time and I can go do things with my headband on you know I'm gonna go get one so I can show you so you're not like imagining what I'm talking about hold on okay like a headband and what you would do is you put it on top here after you've put your spray down and you're gonna just keep it like that go do some chores, make your kids some lunch. I don't know. <laughs> Let it sit and dry for, I don't know, five minutes or so. And then you're gonna come back, take it off, and your lace is gonna be glued to your forehead. But it's not gonna be like 
so stuck that it's gonna be stuck forever. It's just gonna be a nice strong hold that will last you throughout the day and you're gonna not have to worry about your wig slipping back because it's just gonna be there holding, holding strong. So you would do the same thing if you were to get the gel. Maybe you're not a spray kind of a person and you feel like it's too all over the place. You want more control. So you would take the gel, squish a little bit of gel on your finger, rub it on your forehead and plop your um, lace over top. You're gonna find that the spray will leave less residue on your lace um, and the gel will leave a little bit more residue. So I don't know, matter of preference. <laughs> Okay, the next thing you're gonna need, and this is gonna be for synthetics, not heat defined synthetic, just strictly synthetics. And that's gonna be a steamer, a steamer, um, just like a fabric steamer that you would use on your clothing. This is gonna be your best friend if you want to revitalize your wig and make it new again. So earlier I was talking about how synthetic fibers get frizzy um, easily, especially with all the friction on them, all the brushing. Um, over time, they're going to get really frizzy, dry feeling, and you're going to be like, oh, this wig is ready for the garbage. I say no. I say do not throw it away. I say get your steamer out and go to town on your wig. So what you're going to need to do is get a fine tooth comb and your steamer and your wig. Don't keep your wig on while you're doing this because you will burn yourself. Um, and you're gonna go through it and steam the ends of your fibers where it's all frizzy. I'm not gonna show you this now. I will also make another separate video about how to steam your wigs too, so that we can all learn how to revitalize them and make them fresh again. So anyways, I just suggest having a steamer because it will increase the longevity of your wig and you will just love it. Okay, now if you have heat friendly fibers, not just synthetic, but heat friendly synthetic fibers, you don't necessarily need to use a steamer. I mean, you could use a steamer, but I wouldn't even recommend it because you can use hot tools as you would on your own human hair. So these are my two favorites to use on heat friendly synthetic fibers. I love this um, round brush. It's a blow dryer round brush because it helps keep a little bit of volume and body within your um, piece. You can help um, curl it a little bit and it's gonna help keep some structure to your wig. Whereas something like a hair straightener, that's gonna straighten your wig right out, but this is excellent for getting rid of any frizzies and fuzziness and dryness in your heat friendly wigs. So these two, I definitely recommend you have, or at least one of them, I would say when you have a heat friendly fiber because heat friendly fibers need heat in order to survive. <laughs> You're going to find that heat friendly fibers get really frizzy, really clumpy, really tangly, really fast. And you're going to be like, bah, this wig is garbage. This is horrible. I don't like this at all. Why did I get this? But that's just the nature of the fiber. It's not that it's a bad wig. That's just the fiber. <laughs> heat friendly fibers get icky really fast and you need heat to help it. So you're gonna need a heat, a heating tool or a hot tool, <laughs> heating tool, hot tool, hot tool. I don't know. You're gonna need a tool that's hot <laughs> in order to help you maintain your fibers and keep them smooth and nice and fresh and new. Okay, I don't know how many things that was, but I am on my last thing, you guys. At least I think I'm on my last thing. I don't know, I could be missing something, but I think it's my last thing. So we're just gonna call it a day after this. <laughs> and the last thing I would suggest is getting a wig stand. And of course this would be to store your wig after a long day of wig wearing. Um, that came off pretty easily because I didn't put, honestly didn't put a lot of um, spray that got to be glued spray on. Um, so it just kind of came off super easy, but if you put more on, it'll stay. Anyways, okay. Wig stand, I find is the most ideal way to store your wigs. It provides ventilation, it lets it air out, it holds its shape. Um, and if you have a shelf and lots of shelving space, then wig stands are great. We do sell wig stands online at chiquel.com, chiquel.ca, chiquel.com.au if you are looking for one. Okay, I know this was a little bit of a longer video, but I hope it was a beneficial one and something that you're able to save and look back on to see what you might need on your wig wearing journey. Do you need all of these things? No, 
Now you don't need them, but they're definitely gonna help make your synthetic journey a little more easy and a little more fun. So take from this what you will, and I am sending back all of these good wig vibes so that you are able to embrace the wig life because let me tell you, it's fun. I love my wigs so stinking much. I don't know if you do too. I hope you do. And if you don't yet, then I hope you get to that place because wigs have really changed my life in a positive way and just made me love myself more with a wig and without a wig. So I hope you kind of get to that point too. All right, I'm gonna just leave it at that and wish you all a beautiful day ahead. And I hope I see you guys next time I'm here posting a video. Okay, bye everybody.